Okay, so uh, we've only got a, a current home screen. I want to create a, an art screen and a PC screen. Now that I have this functionality of the nav bar that hopefully works, I'm going to create different screens and see how the nav bar works. Let's go back to Notepad, go back to the HTML file. At about line 40, I have a tag that starts a section to show the home section. We're going to create then a an art section and a PC section. So at the at the end of section, which is at about line 92, that ends and then the footer starts. I'm going to make a comment here because even though I've got the nicer named tags of section and article and such, I'm going to have more than one section. So I'm going to add a comment at the end of line 92 to let me know that this is the end of my home section. So your HTML comments, remember, look like that. And we'll add the tag end of home section. So at a glance, I can tell, okay, that ends a section. What section was it? Oh, it's the end of the home section. On the next line, we will then create a brand new section. We've got another section. And that's going to need the the trappings of the other section. That's going to need a data role, an ID, a data title. All right, so first we'll start with data role. Page. Now it's a brand new screen on our app. Easy. Then we've got data title equals. This will be art. That's the text that's going to be up here on the top of the screen when you when a person visits that screen. The title. And then an ID. Art. So that when you click the button to go to hashtag art, it goes to the art screen. And we'll fill in more details, but just briefly to see if this works. Remember, inside of a section, we also need an article. And this uh, is going to be role equals main and class equals UI dash content. We're going to have to Forget about data role equals content. Now it's got to be those two things. I believe this is enough to see if it works, so I'll just um, write something, save it and run it, and hopefully you're able to go from home screen to art screen. And the buttons will highlight and the text will change and all that. Let's see if this is enough for it to work.
Okay, so at the very least what should happen now is that you're on the home screen and then you click the art button and it takes you to the art screen. Hello, art page two. Oh, my footer is missing. So it does jump between the different uh, screens so far, home and art. My footer is missing, which it wasn't a moment ago, I think. And then also the, the text is not highlighting here, so that's disappointing also. Um, so the way it's supposed to work... Oh wait, my footer is there. Oh yes, so my footer is there. Uh, so the footer, the header, they're both there like I'm expecting. I do transition page to page. It's not highlighting, so there's something uh, a little bit off, either in the JavaScript or perhaps the naming of my elements because I called it art and art. I'm just thinking out loud. And then I called this one art. So they're all consistent. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm not going to deal with it right now. Uh, the functionality of it works, however, so hopefully it works for yours too. Uh, we need to then create a PC screen so that I can go home, art, PC. Right? PC doesn't work yet because there's no screen to show. There's no section. So let's do that. Basically, you can copy and paste here to save yourself a little effort because I've got a section that has a very skeletal framework for a brand new screen. This 93 to 97 where I created a section, data role page, data title, I spelled it right, data title, art, ID art. So you're going to copy that. That's already got a little bit of stuff filled in and that'll be a shortcut. I'm copying an existing section and pasting. And then, of course, I need to change the data title because it's my PC screen, the ID to say PC, and maybe something else. Hello, PC page. Yeah, and my example file works, so I need to confirm what's going on because it's not doing it here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but in my testing project before that I worked on before the class, it works exactly like it's supposed to, so I need to check what's the difference. Anyway, so right now I've created a brand new page, so home, art, PC. So the home screen is going to have a heading and a little bit of text and graphics. The art screen is also going to have a heading, and that's where the this art buttons are going to go. And then in the PC, this is where this whole list view element will go. So I got this code out of Codica last time. 
and now it's hanging out on my home screen, but this should go into the art screen and this should go into the PC screen. So we'll do it together, but it should make sense what we're about to do. Let's see, we'll go back to HTML file. And on line, on line 45 or so, uh, from 45 to 61, I've got a div with a data role of collapsible set. I'm going to select that whole chunk and cut it, and then we'll paste it into our section of art. I want to use that widget, that component, to display art content. It doesn't make sense on the home screen. So select that whole div data row collapsible set, line 45 to 61, and cut it or drag it. Cut it, and we'll put it in our section of art after the hello art page text. So I took it from home page to art page. Should be pretty obvious. And then we'll do the same thing for list view in a moment. So if I go to the art screen, I have those that uh, component. And then what I need to do next is take the collapsible set from the home page and put it into the PC page. So that's going to be a little cut and paste also there, line 80. Div data roll, oh, not that one, um, line 46. UL data roll list view. So this is one that's not quite consistent. It doesn't have a div, it has UL, it's an unordered list, it's bullet points, data role list view. And so that goes down to about 46 to 68. Cut that and put it into your PC page. We've got a place for everything and everything in its place. The header, the, the home screen looks a little barren at the moment, but that's going to have correct content. And then we've got art and PC. All right, so did everyone get something like that? Home screen, art screen, PC screen. Now I have something here in my notes that I forgot to add. So I'm going to try to add it, and this might fix a problem or two. Uh, you guys, you're a little distracting. You're a little distracting there. I'm, I'm on the lecture. So if you're going to help each other a little quieter, please. So what I need to add here is um, something to my to my nav bar. Actually, um, 
back on line uh, 22, I've got the link to home and art and, and PC and such, and this is something that I noted in the documentation that I forgot to add. Um, so these, uh, these pages, I can actually do what is known as a prefetch, which is to load them uh, right away so that they're available to use. So we're going to add an extra attribute. We've got the href attribute, data transition, data icon. We're going to add another attribute here. Uh, I'm going to add it just right after the, the href. So line 22, we've got href home. We'll add data dash prefetch equals true. This is basically load the content of these pages right away. Have them ready in memory. This should, in theory, speed up the responsiveness of our app because before a page won't load until it's clicked on, but here it can be ready, you know, much more ready to load up. I want to do that for the three links. So data dash prefetch true also for art and PC. And so we're seeing data dash something. Again, that's HTML5. But then whatever follows next, that would either be jQuery or jQuery mobile. How do we know? Well, we read the documentation. We, uh, we look at the tutorials on the websites, as I did earlier today, to kind of bone up on what's the latest on jQuery mobile. And I saw in there that it said, well, this is something that might be useful to add data prefetch to your links uh, for, for uh, speed boost. So because our home screen looks a little bit barren, we'll add some content here. Um, so this is line 43. It simply says heading. That's right, welcome. And then we'll have a paragraph. So after the heading text, we'll have a paragraph of text. We're going to go borrow some text from the, the college's home page. And that way we'll have some text. And then we'll also borrow a picture from the college's home page and put it on screen here. Because again, uh, going back, this app will be the unofficial app for the college where it'll show um, classes and content for the college. So on the web browser, I'm going to go to sdce.edu. <coughs> sdce.edu. There's a little bit of text at the bottom under mission. I'm going to copy that text. And so in that paragraph that I've got, I'm going to paste that in there. And I'm just going to alter it a little bit. Our mission is to provide
So I've got some text. I want to add a picture. I'm going to go back to the college's website. And we're going to borrow some of the pictures that that um, that we have here. Let's see. If you click on the word programs on the website, we have this top graphic. So let's right click that graphic and save image as. And we're going to save that image to our project folder. We've got an images folder, I believe, waiting for us. <clears throat> yeah, so we've got an images folder in our project folder, and this image is called org image JPEG. <clears throat> So I'm saving that picture. If we go to the student services, I've got this picture. Let's save it also. Certificate programs. So we've got three pictures for the moment. We can go around the website and, and get some other pictures a little later. But in my project folder, I saved, in the images folder, I saved a few, a few pictures there. So let's say I want to display one of those pictures on my home screen. I've got one called hsbanner.jpg, and I've got the welcome text, the paragraph. Next, I want to display a picture. So let's say that we'll just looking ahead a little bit, uh, we're going to put a picture here. We're going to need to style it and such, but for the moment, uh, we'll we'll write we'll add a div container, a generic container, so that later I can write some CSS to further enhance my picture. So in the div, we need the image tag. Remember that IMG, and that needs the attribute SRC in quotes. And now we need to write the path to the picture. The picture was called HS Banner JPEG. And that should work, right? The <clears throat> picture's in there, so it should work, right? Well, obviously if we check it, we'll confirm. But no, the picture should not work. Why? It's in the images folder, exactly. That assumes that the picture is on the same folder, the same level as the HTML code. Well, the picture is actually in a folder called images. So we're going to need here images slash. Is it called image or images? images. So there's a folder called images, so that's what that means. In the folder images, you'll find the banner, hsbanner.jpg.
So that does display the picture, but not as best as it could. Here's my picture. It shows up. Good. On the left side, it has a little bit of a border, but on the right side, it doesn't. So with CSS, we can control this picture to work a little better. Um, there's a couple of things that we can do. <clears throat> right now the picture is just taking up as much space as it originally is sized and if I have a tall uh, device like that, well it's gonna crop out a, a part. If I've got a wide device I would see it more until it runs out. And we have a couple of options here. Uh, we can make the picture grow and shrink depending on the size of the the device. That's one way. And then another way is, well, we can show and hide enough of the picture that is necessary. This is not quite doing that because it's just falling off the edge of my screen. So we have those two things that we can do. We can, we can do them both relatively easily. So in order for this to work, we're going to use some CSS. and we're going to target this picture in the document. Now we saw a little while ago that when we were writing jQuery we could target elements on screen. Uh, here we're using CSS but that's relying on IDs and classes. So here we're either going to add an ID or a class to this div to be able to reference it, to be able to control it. But if you recall, maybe in your opinion, should we use a class or should we use an ID here? <coughs> Any opinions? Class, maybe, why? Uh, what like the look of the thing? Look the... Class will, affect, will let us affect the look of the thing, yes, but IDs will too. Any other opinions? We're going to use it once. You can only use an ID once. So that might be useful. However, maybe I'm going to have the same sort of layout in more than one screen. And all of my screens actually exist in different sections in the same document. So then I'd have to write another ID for another picture. And another ID for another picture. That's not efficient. So a class would work better here. And the point of that is because we can reuse a class. An ID we can only use once, and sometimes we want to use an ID once, and sometimes we want to use it many times. So here, if we want to use it many times, it should be a class. So let's, on the div here, let's add a class. And let's call this um, div img wide. These names can be anything we want, of course, but I try to make names that might make sense at a glance because I'm going to write a bunch of CSS as the project goes on, and if I name these things something not quite obvious, I'm going to waste time to figure out what does that CSS do again? And here I'm writing that I'm, I'm applying this to a div, although I don't necessarily need to use a div, so I might not need to call it div, but I'm going to try to apply this to divs it's going to regard images, and it's going to be wide images. They're going to stretch out to fill the width of its container. That's why I named it like that. These names can be anything, of course, but we'll go with div image wide. And notice my spelling. If you forget which is capital, which is lowercase, just keep it all lowercase. It'll also work. But uh, when you get into programming, oftentimes programmers uh, put the capital letters in there to make it readable, because that a at a glance, this is gibberish, but if I've got capital letters, it's a little less gibberish. So this is, this is a class, this is a CSS, therefore I need to write some CSS code. We've got in our project a CSS file that will store globally all our CSS code. We've got a file that stores all our JavaScript and a file that stores all our CSS. So let's open the CSS file from the project folder. Let's open it in Notepad. Let 
and it says put your custom CSS here. So because we wrote a a class right here, we need to write some CSS, a CSS selector. The CSS will select the thing on screen, and it's a class where so it starts with a dot, the name of the selector, open curly brace, close curly brace. We've seen this. The difference is that now we're writing it in a central CSS location. The last time we wrote CSS, we wrote it embedded in our project. We had a style tag, open style, close style, and we had all our CSS rules in there, our CSS selectors. Here we're writing it in a separate file. And just to start off, inside here we'll write with colon 100% semicolon. This will stretch to be 100% of the width of the container. So you should save your files, the HTML and the CSS, and then check it in the web browser. Again, if you run this CSS file, it'll show you CSS in the web browser. You want to run the HTML file. Let's see what that did. put it in the wrong place. Let me fix that in a moment, but here's what's supposed to happen. It doesn't work yet, but here's what's supposed to happen. I have a wide screen, the picture will fill up 100%. I have a small screen, the picture will shrink. That's what that CSS is doing. We put it in the wrong place though. It's still the same code, but we need to go back to the HTML, and notice I move the class to the image, not the div. There's different ways to do this. I'm, I'm thinking of something else, but um, it's the same CSS code in the CSS file, but I moved the class out of the div onto the image. Because it's a class, technically we can leave it there too. because we, we can reuse classes. That's a good point. Um, this, this works, but at a certain point, if I stretch it out much further, you're going to start to maybe see a blurry picture. So this might not be the best solution all the time. Here it works, but if I started with a picture that was that size originally, and then forced it to go 100% this wide, it would probably get very blurry and pixelated. So if you've got a larger picture to start off with, that'll give you better results. A larger picture shrunk down to the different sizes will give you better results than a small picture blown up to the larger sizes. What's a good size to start off with? Well, let's say that we, are, that we know that we're eventually targeting mobile devices and such. Um, let me confirm the size of this one because it's, it's also going to depend on the devices that you're targeting. So see, this one's 959 wide, and nowadays devices are getting pretty advanced. You can have a full HD device in your pocket, which is a pixel width of 1900 pixels. So 
if you know that you're going to be targeting the high-end devices, a width of, of 1,900 pixels might be what you need for that. But that assumes that my app is going to be, you know, landscape. If our app is going to be horizontal, that, that width is 1,080. So the short answer is that there's no short answer because there's so many different sizes of devices. This particular one seems to look good on the different sizes that I grow it to, and it's just about a thousand pixels wide. So that might be a good, a good size, one thousand pixels. Yes. Is there a way to limit? I'm guessing it's going to be a different control, a different function that we'll have, right? But uh, with the initial picture is pulled out of somewhere else, um, you don't want it to blow up past its original size. We can actually write some CSS. I'd have to look it up, but there's some CSS that will keep us within the boundaries. Make it be at least 25% wide if it's on this kind of screen, and make it go up to 75% wide if it's on that kind of screen. It's a little more complex, but there are ways to keep it within ranges, definitely. Can you put in like different sizes of the, uh, the pictures, maybe like the small ones for the small screen size like for the that's another way like that's another way to do it that would really be uh, following along the 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 concept of the adaptive web design that if you provide different size versions for different devices that's classic AWD although AWD is is not has fallen a bit uh, out of favor as opposed to RWD, responsive web design, which would be something like this, one size fits all, one picture that we write different code for to grow it and shrink it as necessary. That might be a little better because we have one file, one graphic, we have multiple lines of code, but those multiple lines of code are not going to take up as much space and resources as multiple pictures. Multiple pictures, you might have 10 megabytes of pictures to cover all the sizes for one picture. And I've got 40 pictures, so 40 times 10, 400 megabytes just for pictures. If I do it this way, one picture, 20 lines of code is still going to be like half of a half of a half of a kilobyte. So you're going to save much more if you kind of use responsive web design code instead of different sizes pictures. So what would be a better way? Well, the way, better way that I just said, that we're going to use the different sizes based on CSS. One larger, large-ish picture, just one, and then with the CSS we can have different code to make it grow or shrink depending on the size of the screen. Yes. 100% though, that would, is that, that's, that means it's going to use the 100% but the device is going to um, dictate. Adjust, dictate the size of the picture. Right? Yes. So, so really, you don't have to do anything beyond that unless you wanted to have the picture smaller. You know. That's so, true. Is that right? That's pretty much true because you, we are seeing here, as I stretch out my monitor, like let's say I've got a big wide tablet. It is growing to that size with 100%. But we get into the problem that if we grow it too big, we might lose quality. But if we start with a larger size image, there might not be a problem. We're going to take a break in just a moment, but let's do one more variation on this theme. Let's say that instead of it growing and shrinking, instead we, if we've got like a small device like that, that it only shows part of the picture, maybe only this much of the picture. So it crops itself to only show that much. If you've got a wide device, then it, then it shows the larger picture. <coughs> We'll do it a little backwards here. We'll write the CSS first, and then we'll apply it on the HTML. We've got a class here that'll simply stretch out any image to 100%. Well, we've got, let's do it this other way here. We'll have dot div image crop. We're going to write a little CSS code here that it'll crop images that are too big.
and I'm suddenly blanking on that code. What is it again? It is... Um, oh, it's overflow colon hidden. Something that goes outside of the parent boundaries will be hidden. This, we should apply it to the containing div. That's the parent. The parent, that div, um, is taking up a certain amount of space, the picture's inside of it, and then if the picture goes too far outside of the div, hide it. Whatever overflows out of that div, hide it. Let me confirm that. I'm going to remove the class of wide image because they're going to conflict. And I'm going to add it instead, this class that we just created, without the dot, of course. Yeah. So div to the div itself, the parent container. I'm adding this class. Div image crop. This picture is much bigger than the size of that div. That div is based on the size of my viewport, the size of my device. So then whatever uh, graphic overflows the div, hide it. So it's a different way of doing it. Notice here, if I've got a monitor this size, I'm showing this much. Notice the edge here. It's not like before where it overflows the edge and it looks odd. Now there's a div here with built-in uh, padding. And if I have a wider screen, it's going to show more and more and more. Eventually the picture runs out, so then it looks like that. But if I got a, a wide tablet like that, I would show more of the picture. If I've got a tall smartphone, well, it would show less of the picture. And yes, then at a certain point, if we've got too small of a device, it would only show that much. We'd have to write a little bit more CSS to make sure that that part shows up properly. So you see all of this, all of these issues with dealing with different devices. Different devices, different sizes. Well, let me back up. The CSS was simply overflow colon hidden. So we've got a couple of CSS rules, and they're classes, so we can apply them throughout our project whenever necessary, because we might want to do the same thing on the computer's screen, on the about screen, etc., etc., and using them as classes or defining them as classes allow us to, allows us to reuse them. And be, even though the syntax is different, it's still the same sort of concept as JavaScript and jQuery. This whole shorthand right here is to select an element on screen to do something with it through JavaScript, through jQuery. And this over here is to select something on screen to do something it, with it with CSS. And CSS is usually to affect the, you know, the style of things, the layout, the design of it. And the uh, JavaScript is the interactivity, the behavior of it. <coughs> So all of those three together are hopefully giving us the results that we're looking for. So what we're going to do here then is, if this worked great, we did we accomplished a lot of things. If it didn't, we're going to uh, take a break to check them out. And actually, we kind of went long. We usually break things up to have breaks and such, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, end, the, end the lecture a little bit earlier than usual. Usually we end it at 9. We're going to end it at 9.40. So that would include our break and then the work time. So I'm going to put my code in the network folder as it is at this point. If you want a copy of it, we'll do some lab time starting now in case you need it. And um, then when we come back next time, we'll keep working. We've got the content that we need to fill in. We've still got other jQuery functionality that we want. And we're going to be continuing our project little by little.